while Tsitching slowly started popping up across colleges in the U.S., one young volunteer decided to bring it back to his neck of the woods in California. But is it always a fun cakewalk? There's a saying that goes, you don't volunteer, you're voluntold. So let's see how he's taken that direction and makes it his own. Jin Zhu and John Xu joined Siji in 1996 at its San Francisco office. They actively volunteered and would bring along their then 13-year-old son, Steve, to learn more about Siji. As a child, I didn't really have a choice. Um, I always had to go where my parents told me to go in the weekends, be dragged along with them. That was what I thought at the time. So wherever we went, we brought him along with us, no matter if he liked it or not. In 1996, my mom, she, uh, she took me with her back to, uh, to Taiwan to attend the Qin Si. And uh, it was there that my perceptions of Ziji completely changed. Sometimes he was a little bit naughty. During one class at the retreat, they separated us, and the mothers had to find their children. I would call my mom's, I would call for my mom, and then I would run somewhere else, and then I would call again. And so, I basically, I, I was having fun, but I made it really, really hard for my mom to find me. The other mothers found their children very quickly, but Steve kept hiding. After the turn of the lights, I realized that my mom was actually crying, uh, because I really, really hurt her feelings. And that was really the first time that I realized that uh, that my actions had consequences. Uh, so, so after that point, I started, you know, paying paying close attention to the classes and why my mom liked Suji so much and, and why it was so important to her. And after a while, it, it started to become important to me too. In 2002, Steve attended college at UC Davis. When he found out there was no Tsuching chapter there, he decided to take action. And everyone was like, oh, so you can go start it there. We started the, the Tsuching group officially towards the end of 2002. And I'm really, really happy that, that it's, it's still around now. I've always hoped that he would walk the Bodhisattva path with his parents. She, she talks to me one day. She says, I was thinking about becoming the advisor for the UC Berkeley Tsuching. Uh, I knew that with my, with my English as poor as it is, the only way I could do it is if I had your help. And so I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. So he was really quite close with the UC Berkeley Tsuching. <laughs> the entire concept of volunteering in Tsuching changes when it's something that you're being forced to do and it turns into something that you want to do. I got a phone call from my mom and she said, oh, by the way, you are the, you are the main advisor for the UC Berkeley Institute now. And I'm like, what happened? Later on, I saw that he had a lot of passion for the Tsuching group activities, so he would quickly agree to help them. She used Tsuching as, as an excuse to get me to participate more, and then as soon as she knew that I was hooked, she's like, okay, it's all yours now. So that was her plan the entire time, and I didn't realize that until after it happened. Walking on the path of Tsuji for nearly 18 years, Steve had transformed into an active volunteer. In 2012, he became a certified member. Since then, recruiting more youth to join the team of volunteers has become one of his most important missions. <laughs>